It's Daybreak on Arise News and it's time for the press for you. A first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. Start this day, our sister publication. And it says, get guns and defend yourselves, Matawale tells Zamfara people. Kwan Kwaso, APC, PDP have failed Nigerians not fit for governance. And just above that, UTM Offshore, Afrex and Bank signs project preparation facility financing deal. Guardia Nigeria this morning leading with the ASU strike. Job market dependency ratio worsens as youths remain idle. Some riders graduates swear to false affidavit to meet up age requirements and parents seek the government's intervention. That leading photo there, not deterred by rain, residents waiting for their PVC registration and validation at the front of INEX office and that's in Mushin, Lagos. Well, the Punch newspaper is leading with Northwest, Northeast fight over slot. I'm still searching, says Tinubu. Uh, Self-defense, firearm ban still in force, CP warns Matawale. And uh, immigration dismisses organ donors under age claim at uh, Borny Dixon back at Aquaramado. The Nation newspaper this morning. Governors take stern steps to battle worsening insecurity. Matawale asked residents to buy guns, okay, to shoot on site for motorcyclists. Uh, more headlines there. The leading photo, President Tinubu Osoba, others eulogize Bajabia Mila at book presentation. And just above the nation's uh, name, CJN proposes 29 justice for the Supreme Court. That's on page five. All the international papers, the independent is leading with G7 nations urged to ditch new fossil fuel projects. It comes as Russia fires missiles on Ukraine's capital, Kiev. And the I newspaper, leaders seek united front away from turmoil at home. And just beside that, monarchy, the Prince Charles risks alienating public after cash controversy. The Financial Times, G7 aims to hurt Russian war chests with price cap on crude exports. And for the press preview, let's bring in Emmanuel Bello, who joins us this morning from our offside studio. Good morning, Emmanuel. Thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at one of the biggest stories making all the national dailies this morning. Get guns and defend yourselves, Matawale tells Zamfara people. He wants Zamfara people to have guns. He says they should get gun licenses and to defend themselves. What are your thoughts on this very, very controversial development? Well, good morning, Ketchi. Good morning, Kenneth. Um, Ketchi, I don't know if you know how to shoot a gun or use a gun, no, I don't. Kenneth. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, uh, jokes apart, I mean, this is an admission, uh, clearly, admission of um, failure, so to say, of the, of the people paid, licensed to protect us. So if the governor, out of desperation, out of, you know, what else is there to do? Ask the citizens to, to hold guns. Uh, nah, nah, earlier before now, we were arguing amongst ourselves here that what about the sanity of the people themselves? What, what do you think of, um, you know, an ordinary with the frustration in, in the land and all, all of that? Uh, somebody gets a hold of a gun. What, what will he use it for? So uh, you have to worry about that. You have to also worry about the proliferation of uh, small arms already. That is a big, huge problem in the country. Uh, it's, there are places where you just have almost uh, everyone uh, having no license, uh, some kind of light weapon uh, with them. We have so many of that. Some of them, even brandishing them in broad daylight, walking around, you have thugs on the streets uh, with guns, with light weapon. So that, that's a problem already. That's a huge problem. And, uh, you know, uh, the federal government is worried about these small arms, how to pick them, how to mob them off the street, how to deal with them. And then uh, to have the governor of a state um, asking his citizens to, to hold guns and to have guns, uh, that will heighten already the problem of proliferation on one hand of these guns and then the crisis of security on the other hand. But there are people who say that, well, this is thinking outside the box. Uh, remember in that same story, it's not the only one that is already thinking of self-help. 
uh, other governors too are trying all sorts of things. Oyo State Governor, for instance, has beefed up uh, the work of Amoteku, you know, uh, the Western Nigerian Security Network, uh, you know, uh, saying, uh, and this goes to what a lot of people have argued in the past, state police, state police, state police. Uh, I remember a former defense minister, T. White Anjuma, coming out so boldly to say, look, defend yourself, and that there's collusion between the people paid, you know, to uh, with taxpayer money to protect us, and then uh, criminals on the other hand. So it was in one one time it was really very very fierce about it. Say, look, it's about time uh, we all you know defended ourselves by getting um, uh, firearms and all of that. So it's not a new call really. Um, and uh, so you have all sorts of people doing in, in another part of the country. Ozodima is giving ten, a ten day. Uh, break to uh, uh, to bandits and saying that if they can come out of the forest, he will, he will, they will get amnesty or else bombardment will start very soon. So you see governors around <laughs> beginning to wear their cap as the chief security officers of, of their state rather than throwing up their arms in frustration and despondency saying that, look, they don't control the security. I think that people are looking up to them for some form of security and now uh, they have to think outside the box. Uh, it could mean more funding uh, for already the vigilante structure they have on ground, or even the extreme measure that Governor Mutawali is taking, which is asking people to go get guns to protect themselves. A lot of people would argue that, they, uh, well, uh, the devil is in the details, and that this is also a dangerous, a very, very dangerous um, appeal uh, to, to make to the security to uh, give licensed guns to people. Emmanuel, uh, is it though, you, you wanted to say something, Kechi? I just wanted to say, I mean, he needs to continue thinking inside the box because giving licenses to the masses to own guns is just going to open a can of worms. And then we're going to have another issue on top of the insecurity that we're already dealing with. And I think the governor, like you said, Emmanuel, is quite desperate because he made another rule. He said security forces should shoot on site any motorcyclists they see in restricted areas. Well, well, maybe that's so, but there are people who say that, look, if you've got gun and I've got gun, the very knowledge that this other person has a gun with him. The other, the, there are people who have seen that that creates what we call the balance of terror. A situation where I know in Kechi, for instance, you've got a gun in your bag and I've got mine too. So, I well, that, there are situations where uh, that could create some kind of psychological, you know, balance, uh, balance of terror between among people uh, to say that, well, you see, this person is armed, I'm armed. I think so many people think that people are defenseless. Maybe that's what Governor Motawali is thinking. When criminals think that people are defenseless and they can't defend themselves, they don't have arms and everything. So they become easy targets and praise. Well, uh, Emmanuel, despite these arguments about guns being dangerous and Nigerians not being able to handle it, uh, the Constitution, Section 33-2A, does make provision for self-defense. It makes it lawful in defense of any person from unlawful violence or for the defense of property. I take up a, a gun a knife, a baton, what's the difference? Well, yes, you're, you're right, but you know, to Nkechi's point, what about this, the sanity, that the level of sanity or maturity that is expected? Of course, uh, self-defense is, is well, you know, it's well known and it's constitutional, but what about um, a situation where everybody has access to firearms and all time, everyone can actually uh, own a gun, even if it's the license type? Uh, you know, it, it, there are people who have feared, feared the fact that that could also lead to some chaos in the system, a situation where every, I mean, you, you can't control, uh, so to speak. So um, elsewhere in the world, people talk about gun laws, people talk about gun control, people talk about, you know, um, ensuring that the right kind of people have the right kind of guns. Uh, that's what, you know, in very civilized type of people talk, when they talk about guns, especially even where you have those kind of freedom, uh, already even in the U.S., because of, you know, those mass shootings that you have everywhere. People begin, are beginning to look at uh, the issues of guns. Uh, the NRA, for instance, at the weekend, you know, uh, not really supporting aspects of those kind of controls, but saying that, look, uh, a lot of people think that they should have their guns. Uh, if you want to replicate that, that sort of thing elsewhere in the world, especially like Mutawali is, is talking about, then you have to take into, uh, into consideration a whole lot of things. The, 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 san the sanity of people, the fact that, uh, you know, given the frustration in the, in, the, in the land, given the confusion and everything, this can also be abused. It's just like the argument people make against the state police that they could be used or they could be abused and the governors could use them uh, to go after their perceived enemies. Uh, but whether you like it or not, what, uh, what Butawale is saying is that, look, it's crunch time. 
uh, it's got to this now that look, we cannot just leave security to those who are paid to do it, to those who are receiving the taxpayer money to do it. It's an admission, if you agree, of, uh, of some form of you know failure on the side of uh, the government to protect its citizens. This is, you know, pushing uh, to the uh, pushing someone to the wall and saying that look, okay, what can we do? So this is what they are all thinking about. Uh, governors are really thinking seriously on um, how to get around the issue of, um, you know, Erufai, for instance, say he doesn't want to negotiate with bandits and that he will never do that. That's another way he's looking at it. So everybody is thinking of ways to do it. Governor Zulung, for instance, was talking about how 200,000 people have been displaced and he's confronted with that uh, confusion. So all over the country, whether it's in the north, in the south, wherever, you have people thinking of how to confront the crisis of banditry, the crisis of kidnapping. And a lot of people will say that any solution that works at this time probably is going to be welcome. But of course, again, uh, to Nkechi's point, it's also not, uh, not likely that if you have everybody hold a gun, uh, that, will, that will solve all the problems that we're dealing with. Well, Emmanuel, let's talk some politics. The Punch newspaper is leading with the APC's presidential candidates. What he's saying, Tunubu, he says the Northwest and Northeast are fighting over the slot of VP, and he's still searching. Meanwhile, you have Kwa Kwan So of the NNPP saying APC and PDP not fit to rule the country. Then you have Atiku from the PDP camp saying, judge me from my track record of being vice president. What are your thoughts on what all these presidential candidates are saying? Well, well it's, um, um, it's not yet campaign, but they're in campaign mode already. And um, uh, they are selling their candidacy, our candidature to the public. And they're looking at the strengths and the weaknesses of um, uh, their positions and their platforms. And for instance, Kwan Kwaso saying that, look, it's neither APC and PDP. And there are people who say that, look, yes, they should move away from that. APC, a lot of people think that, look, it's a party that's failed this country. We, we're just talking about security issues. And people put it squarely at the doorstep of the APC and say, look, you own this. You own this problem. And the PDP is campaigning strongly on that. Strong campaigning on the fortunes or misfortunes of the APC and saying, look, we want to erode eight years of, of, of crisis. We want to bring back the good days. Uh, but Kwon Kwaso saying that, no, all of that is a problem. And there are people who agree with Kwon Kwaso that, look, there is need for a third force. A lot of people think that they are looking towards the labor direction, but he is saying, no, that's not where to look at. You look at my direction. Uh, there are people who think that if labor and NMPP can come together, that's the kind of push that uh, you, might, you might be looking for. But, uh, but of course, you, will, you know the crisis with that. None of the, uh, the NMPP is not, uh, Congozo is not thinking of stepping down uh, for Peter Obi uh, at all. And Peter Obi, of course, not thinking of that. And uh, a lot of people think that both party, NMPP and LP, uh, you know, individually do not have the structures. So we boast about that all the time, that it doesn't need structures, it needs the people. Uh, but people say that, look, these parties are not strong enough. The APC and the PDP still seem to be the major party out there, you know, and, and but a lot of people think that this race is going to go down straight between Tinubu and Atiku. Tinubu himself, you know, struggling with that problem of, uh, you know, a running mate, not too sure who to pick. The Muslim-Muslim ticket thing, it's a huge problem to him. Even his acceptance and acceptability uh, in some parts of the North uh, be becoming a crisis. Somewhere in Katina the, the other day, a whole uh, Tinubu office was, yeah, is it Katina, one of the states, was, was converted for Atiku. Atiku seemed to be making inroads into some parts of the North, and uh, Tinubu needs to worry about that, alongside the issue of, um, you know, a running mate. But Atiku himself, uh, again, he's presenting with a crisis of uh, people looking at those 16 years of, you know, of, of, of the PDP and saying they don't want those days back. But Atiku now saying that, look, judge me on my record. I've done well. I did very well as vice uh, president. Remember that Ovasin Jotu at the weekend was saying that, look, he regretted, um, uh, you know, making uh, uh, Atiku a, a running mate. There were stories around that. So some of everybody seemed to have his own baggage and they're dealing with it. But Atiku now saying that, look, if you look at everyone on, on, on the stage, uh, judge me on my records, and that is what you should be looking at, my track record. But they can all talk about some form of track record. Obi likes to talk about that a lot, what he did in Anambra. Tinubu talks about what he did in Lagos. So each one of them can talk about what they've done uh, in the past uh, that will make them presidents. Well, we look forward to what happens this week. Uh, but those who would love to register to get voters' cards can do so, as the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, will be extending the process. And that's the press preview this morning. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Bello.